Hey, Sherlock. Yes, you. Have you had your morning cup of coffee yet? Then put on your detective hat. It's time to work. Yeah. In two years, this dog is going to be twice as old as it was five years ago. How old is the dog at the moment? The pooch is 12 years old. Look at this picture. How many squares can you find here? There are 11 squares in this picture. Kudos if you found all of them. Mia is three times older than Anna. Three years ago, Anna was a year younger than Amelia is now. Olivia is twice as old as Anna. Put the girls in order of their age. It goes like this. Mia, Olivia, Anna, and Amelia. David got lost in a jungle. After wandering for hours, he came to a place where the path split into three smaller trails. The first one led to an active volcano with red-hot lava bubbling in its crater. If David chose the second path, he would get to a clearing swarming with venomous bats. And the third path ended in a swamp, swallowing everything and everybody that got there. Uh -oh. Where should he go? David should choose the second path. Most bats are only active at night. Plus, they almost never attack humans. A deaf man came to a store to pick up the flowers he had ordered for his wife. How did he explain to the shop assistant what he needed? He just said so. He was deaf, not mute. Here's a joke to lighten the mood. Don't take it too seriously. Why do elephants have wrinkles? No one is brave enough to iron them. Now let's check how attentive you are. Your task is to figure out which vampire is the real one. The first vampire has a reflection. The second one doesn't have fangs. Only the third one is the real vampire. How about these mummies? Which one is real? The first one is the real mummy. The second one is just wearing a costume. See that zipper? And the third mummy has blue eyes. Now you need to guess which of them is the ghost bride. Have you noticed that the first one is sweating? The third bride is just wearing a costume, but the second one is the real ghost. She's slightly transparent. Which of these ladies is the real mermaid? The first one is the real mermaid, the second girl has a zipper on the tail, and the third one is hiding a snorkeling mask behind her back. Your next task is to guess which of them is the real leather face. The first one has a saw with a label from a toy store. The second one has a can of red spray paint in his apron pocket. But the third one seems to be real. Which of these creatures is the real zombie?
The first one is the real thing. The second one has a sandwich in his pocket. See? And the third one might have caught a cold. He has a runny nose. Try to guess who the real Slender Man is. The first one has a very realistic mask on his face, but we can still see a gap between the mask and his body. The third one has lost one of his gloves with long artificial fingers, but the second one is the real Slender Man. Which of these creatures is the real orc? The first one is the real orc, the second one doesn't have fangs, and the third one has a different skin tone on his face and body, so he must be wearing a mask. Physicists have built devices to move it very fast. The last seven letters of its name can usually be found in newspapers, magazines, and journals. Can you figure out what I'm talking about? A particle. There are three playing cards in a row. You've got the following clues. There is a two to the right of a king. A diamond can be found to the left of a spade. An ace is to the left of a heart. A heart is to the left of a spade. Now, try to identify all three cards. The cards are the ace of diamonds, king of hearts, and two of spades. Lewis and his friend Mark were playing basketball. Suddenly, the ball landed in the garden of Lewis's neighbor, a very unfriendly gentleman. An even more unfriendly dog was guarding that garden. Luckily, it was tied to a tree, but the ball uh -oh. fell too close to that tree. If the dog spotted Lewis, it would follow the guy's every step. And if the guy came close enough, he would get bitten. How can Lewis get his ball back without getting hurt in the process? Lewis should walk around the tree, staying out of that dog's reach. The dog will keep following him until the entire length of the animal's leash is wrapped around the tree. Then Lewis should grab his ball and run away. The son of the dentist's father is talking to the father of the dentist's son, and the dentist isn't taking part in the discussion. Can you figure out these family ties? The dentist is a woman, and the people who are talking are her husband and her brother. Ice will melt if you heat it, but if you heat me, I'll become solid. What am I? I'm an egg! You buy this thing to eat, but you never eat it. What is it? It's a plate. James left a folder with important documents on the table in his home office and went to a business meeting. When he returned, he found out that the documents had disappeared. Uh -oh. James had three suspects. His brother said, I've been swimming in the pool since you left. I haven't seen or heard anything. The cook replied, Tomorrow we're having a party, and I've been preparing the food. The security guard told James, Hey, I've been outside all this time, checking the garden for mice. Who knows where the documents are? It's the security guard. I bet his job description doesn't include pest control. Maria won the lottery and returned home with a large sum of money. 
but her sister called her and asked for help, so the girl had to rush out. Before leaving, she put the money under the carpet in her bedroom. When she came back, the money wasn't there. There were three people in her apartment while she was away. An electrician came to fix her AC. A neighbor visited to pick up some books. And Maria's housekeeper was cleaning the apartment. Who took the money? It was the housekeeper. She was the only person who had any reason to check under the carpet. You're trapped in a huge deserted mansion, far away from civilization. The windows are either boarded up or too high above the ground. The only tree that grows close enough to touch is too thin to hold you. The entrance door is also securely locked. You see three doors. All of them lead to freedom, but behind the first door, there's a raging fire. The second door hides hundreds of venomous scorpions. And behind the third door, there's a dark maze filled with different traps. What should you do? Break off a tree branch and light it in the first room. Now you have a torch. Escape through the maze that isn't dark anymore. You're locked in a room with three doors. You can safely walk through any of them, but the doorknobs are the real problem. The first one is under high voltage and you won't survive touching it. The second is covered with dangerous poison. You can't let it get on your skin. And the third doorknob is so hot that it'll make your hand burn. Which Uh doorknob should you try? The second one. You can take off any piece of clothing and use it to open the door. This way, you won't have to touch the doorknob with your hand. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his gas tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and another customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him, 505. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505, which looks like SOS. You have a sock drawer. It has four black socks, eight brown socks, two white socks, and eight tan socks. You need to pull out a matching pair of socks in the dark. There is no light and you can't see the socks. Well, that'll teach you to pay your electric bill on time. Meanwhile, how many socks do you need to pull out in the dark to get one matching pair of socks? Five. You only have four different color of socks. If you pick five socks, you will definitely get one pair of matching socks. A fairy had an assistant, Dwarf Martin. Once, the fairy asked Martin to visit a powerful wizard and pick up three potions she had ordered. The dwarf received the parcel, but on his way back, he got into a real trap. In front of him, there were three doors, and he couldn't get past them. He had to go through one of them. But behind the first one, there was a bottomless abyss. Behind the second door, there were venomous spiders. Even their webs were poisonous. And the third door was hiding a raging fire. Martin couldn't choose the door, but he came up with an idea. He decided to use one of the potions the wizard had given him. He had the potion of invisibility, the potion of speed, and the potion of forgetfulness. Which potion should Martin drink, and which door should he choose? His best option is to drink the potion of speed and dash through the fire so it doesn't really hurt him. Detective Brown rushed to an expensive restaurant. Someone had stolen a gold spoon there. If the detective didn't find the real culprit, the waiter would have big problems. 
Luckily, there were still a lot of people in the restaurant, and Detective Brown questioned the main suspects. A group of friends said they were celebrating a birthday. They wouldn't spoil their party this way. A cheerful man said he'd just been wandering about and had dropped by to check out this place. And a weird-looking guy answered that his wife had left him, and he had come to the restaurant to take his mind off his problems. Can you help the detective find the criminal? The second man lied. He said he had been to this restaurant for the first time. But look, he's wearing a hat with the restaurant's logo. Gotcha! Look at these three people who seem to be having fun. They're hanging on a tree. But one of them is a ghost. Can you guess who it is? The woman on the left has just rolled her eyes. That's why she looks so creepy. The guy in the middle is wearing a mask. But unlike the others, the hair of the lady on the left ignores gravity. She must be the ghost. Brave warrior Richard set off on an adventure together with his two assistants. Once, he came across a kingdom where a princess was locked in a high tower. Richard decided to save her and, who knows, maybe even marry her later. First things first, he went to the king, but the ruler didn't give the warrior any hints. Luckily, Richard's assistants found a secret map. But they weren't bright enough to figure out what it meant and which window of which castle Richard needed to climb into to save the princess. Can you help them? First, we need to determine which castle is the right one. Aha! Here it is! Just look at its windows. Now, we just need to follow the arrows and find the correct window. Yep, that's right! A very large truck needs to cross a 20-mile long bridge. Unfortunately, the bridge can only hold the weight of 10,000 pounds. Even a single extra pound will make the bridge collapse. Luckily, the weight of the truck is exactly 10,000 pounds. The driver moves the car carefully and crosses almost 85% of the distance of the bridge. He stops to get a small break when suddenly a bird lands on the truck. What's going to happen now? Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge won't collapse. The truck has already traveled 85% of the total distance and has used some gas. So the extra weight of the bird doesn't add any extra load to the bridge. There is a boat with a ladder attached to it. This ladder is 8 feet long. If the water rises 4 feet, how much of the ladder will remain over the surface of the water? Still 8 feet. The rising water will lift the boat and the ladder is attached to the vessel. Ruth had just moved into a new house and was busy with boxes. Meanwhile, while she was distracted, someone took her laptop. The girl went over to her new neighbors, hoping that one of them had seen something. Eric told her that he had been staying at home with a fever the whole day. Emma said she didn't even know a new neighbor was coming. And Jonathan said he just got home from his office. Who took Ruth's laptop? Look at Jonathan's car. It's covered with a thick layer of snow. The man lied. He hadn't been to work. One wizard catches people and then makes them choose between two doors. Behind one of them, there's an unfriendly, to put it mildly, dragon. And behind the other, there's a chest filled with gold. The ones who pick the right door become rich and are allowed to leave the castle. But if it's the wrong door, well, the outcome is much more tragic. There are two signs on the doors. One lies and the other is truthful. On the first door, it's written, The treasure is here. The dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, the treasure and the dragon aren't in the same room. Where's the gold? (laughs) 
The chest with the treasure is in the second room. The second statement is true, which means the first one is false. Can you find all the emojis hidden in this picture? So how many have you spotted? There are actually five emojis here. Have a look! What about this picture? How many emojis can you spot here? Look at that! Six emojis! Have you found all of them? A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34, and next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. Ooh, look at this! A car has crashed into a restaurant window, smashing Uh it. Detective Harris has come to investigate the case. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims that the other person did it. Can you help the detective figure out who's lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. Look at these three men. They're at the airport. Can you figure out which of these guys is married? All these men are holding their passports and tickets in their hands. None of them is wearing a wedding ring. But if you pay attention to the man sitting on the bench, You'll notice that on his ticket, it's written family discount. So he must be the one who's married. Mike was on his way to visit his grandma, who lived on the other side of the valley. It was her anniversary, so he wanted to give her the cakes he had made. Between Mike's house and her house, the guy had to cross five bridges. And as it was in the land of make-believe, there was a troll under every bridge. Each troll insisted that Mike pay a troll toll. Before the guy could cross their bridge, he had to give them half of the cakes he was carrying. But since they were kind trolls, each of them gave Mike back an entire cake. How many cakes did Mike have to take with him to make sure that he arrived at his grandma's house with exactly two cakes? Mike needs to take two cakes. At each bridge, he's required to give half of his cakes, and he receives one back, which leaves him with two cakes after every bridge. Last week, the local primary school was visited by a school inspector who was there to make sure that teachers were performing well in the respective classes. He was very impressed with one particular teacher. The inspector noticed that each time she asked a question, every child in the class raised their hand eager to answer it. Even more surprisingly, even though the teacher always chose a different child to answer the question, the replies were always correct. What was the secret? All the children were instructed to raise their hands whenever a question was asked. It didn't matter whether they knew the answer or not. If they did not know the answer, however, they had to raise their left hand. If they knew the answer, they would raise their right hand. The class teacher would choose a different child each time, but always only the ones who had their right hand raised. Mr. Brown opened a newspaper in the morning and saw a headline, Workers want to make less money. He was confused until he read the article. What was going on?
The workers who wanted to make less money worked at the mint and were tired of being overworked. They want to work less, which means making less money since the money is made at the mint. A frog is at the bottom of a well. To get out of it, it needs to climb 30 feet. Each morning, the frog jumps 3 feet up the path. But each night, as it sleeps, it slips 2 feet back down. Thus, at the beginning of the first day, the frog has 30 feet to go. At the beginning of the second day, it has 29 feet to go, and so on. How many days will it take the frog to get out of the well? It'll take 28 days for the frog to get out. In other words, it'll get out on the morning of the 28th day. This is because at the beginning of the 28th day, the frog has 3 feet left to travel. And since the frog jumps 3 feet forward each morning, it will jump out of the well on this day. A man worked for a high security institution. One day he went in to work only to find that he could not log into his computer terminal. Uh -oh. His password wouldn't work. Then he remembered that all the passwords were reset every month for security purposes. So he went to his boss and said, Hey boss, my password is out of date. The boss answered, Yeah, that's right. The password is different. But if you listen carefully, you'll be able to guess the new one. It has the same number of letters as your old password, but only four of the letters are the same. The man answered, Thanks, boss. Went back to his computer and correctly logged into his station. What was his new password? You'll get an extra smart Yahoo! bonus if you guess what his old password was. I'll give you a hint. The man's password is nine letters long, and it can be more than one word. The old password was out of date, and the new one is different. The man said, my password is out of date. And the boss told him the new one when he said, the password is different. Many, many years ago, one guy was <laughs> captured by an evil witch who kept him in her house. There was a cellar door in the house, and the witch warned the guy to never open it because he was not ready to see what was behind it. Can you guess what was on the other side of the door that the witch didn't want the guy to see? The guy was actually locked in the cellar, and on the other side of the door is the rest uh -oh. of the house and the outside world. The witch just didn't want the guy to escape. Marty and Jill want to copy three 60-minute tapes. They have two tape recorders that will dub the tapes for them, so they can do two at a time. It takes 30 minutes for each side to complete. Therefore, in one hour, two tapes will be completed, and in another hour, the third will be done. Jill says all three tapes can be finished in 90 minutes. How is it possible? Jill will rotate the three tapes. Let's call them tapes 1, 2, and 3, with sides A and B. In the first 30 minutes, they will work with 1A and 2A. In the second 30 minutes, they will record 1B and 3A. Tape 1 is now done. Finally, in the last 30 minutes, they will tape 2B and 3B. Let's say you have two jugs. One of them holds exactly 3 gallons and the other holds five gallons. With the help of just these two jugs and a fire hose, how can you measure out exactly four gallons of water? Fill the five-gallon jug to the top, then pour it into the three-gallon jug until it's full. You now have two gallons of water remaining in the five-gallon jug. Pour out the water from the 3-gallon jug and then pour the 2 gallons from the 5-gallon jug into the 3-gallon one. Finally, fill the 5-gallon jug to the top and pour it into the 3-gallon jug until it's full. There was only space left for one more gallon in the 3-gallon jug. So, you now have exactly 4 gallons in the 5-gallon jug. One day, a boss told his employees, I can fight and beat any man who works here. 
A new employee, a seven-foot-tall ex-prize fighter, decided to challenge the boss. Interestingly, the boss won the bet, even though he didn't defeat the man. What did the boss do? It's simple. Not to lose face, he fired the new employee on the spot so that he didn't work in the company anymore. Now let's check how attentive you are. Look at this note. Can you find a mistake here? The mistake is actually in the task itself, at the end. See? The word find is misspelled. The next task is even trickier. Can you spot a heart-shaped berry among all these berries? Right, here it is. Wow, that was tricky. Look at this watch. What's wrong with it? The time is messed up. After 8, we've got 11, then 10, and then 9. How about this image? What's wrong here? Actually, there's two mistakes here. The prices with the numbers 3 and 18 are placed upside down. This situation can't exist in reality. Why? If we compare the size of the cargo ship and the width of the passage, we'll understand that it's impossible for such a huge vessel to squeeze through such a narrow passage. And this picture, there's something seriously wrong with it. Can you figure out what exactly? Look at the calendar, September 31, but this date doesn't exist. Why did these TikTok stars get into a fight? Because they couldn't agree on who said what. Now they're all confused and need your help to sort things out. Get ready to play detective and match the statements to the stars. And don't worry, we promise there won't be any TikTok dances involved. Unless you want to. <laughs> Let's get cracking. So here are some clues. There are three TikTok stars involved. Lily, Max, and Ava. One of them said, I have the most followers on TikTok. Another one exclaimed, my dance videos get the most likes. The TikTok star who claimed to have the most followers is not Ava. Lily did not make the statement about having the most lines. Let's analyze the given clues to determine which TikTok star made each statement. So, there are three TikTok stars involved, Lily, Max, and Ava. One of them said, I have the most followers on TikTok. Let's assign the statement about having the most followers to one of the TikTok stars. Lily, L, Max, M, or Ava, A. Another one exclaimed, my dance videos get the most likes. Let's assign the statement about having the most likes to one of the TikTok stars. Lily, L, Max, M, or Ava, A. We know that Ava did not claim to have the most followers, and Lily did not claim to have the most likes. Now we can determine the TikTok star who made each statement. Lily L did not make the statement about having the most likes. Ava A did not claim to have the most followers. Max M can be assigned the statement about having the most followers since Lily and Ava are ruled out. So the statements can be attributed as follows. Ava A, my dance videos get the most likes. Max M, I have the most followers on TikTok. Lily L. Statement Unknown Nahoy, matey! You stumbled upon a trio of treasure chests, each with a fancy symbol etched on its interior. But fear not, me hearty, 
or there be a node nearby that give you the clues to unlock them. Think you got what it takes to match the right key to each chest and claim the treasure? Arr, let's find out. But before we start, remember there are some rules for you to follow. There are three chests labeled A, B, and C, and three keys labeled X, Y, and Z. Each chest has a unique symbol, a star, a heart, or a diamond. Each key has a unique symbol, a sun, a moon, or a keyhole. Only one key can unlock each chest, and only one chest can be unlocked by each key. Arr, too many rules, right? Alright, I've got some clues for you as well. The key with the sun symbol does not unlock the chest with the heart symbol. The key with the moon symbol unlocks the chest with the star symbol. The key with the keyhole symbol does not unlock the chest with the diamond symbol. Aha! By analyzing the given clues, we can determine the key chest matching as follows. The key with the sun symbol does not unlock the chest with the heart symbol. Ooh. Therefore, we can eliminate the possibility of key X unlocking chest B. The key with the moon symbol unlocks the chest with the star symbol. Since the moon key must unlock the star chest, we can deduce that key Y unlocks chest A. The key with the keyhole symbol does not unlock the chest with the diamond symbol. Since the key with the keyhole symbol cannot unlock chest C, the only remaining key, key Z, must unlock chest C. Drawing from these deductions, we can guess the matching of the keys to chests as follows. Key X to chest C, key Y to chest A, and key Z to chest B. <laughs> Once upon a time, a super-rich lady kicked the bucket and bequeathed her massive fortune to her four kiddos, Amy, Ben, Claire, and David. But wait, there's a catch. Life's unfair, so each kid was to receive a different sum of money. Sorry, there's nothing I can do. That's the lady's last wish. Here are the rules. Claire must receive more money than David. Amy must receive more money than Ben. The child who receives the most money must have a name starting with the letter C. And the most important thing, the more letters in the name there are, the more money the kid gets. Time to play who gets what. Using the clues provided, can you figure out the order in which these lucky kiddos get their inheritance and how much moolah they each score? Based on the given conditions, we can deduce that lucky Claire must receive the most money. Next comes David with five letters in his name. Amy receives the third highest amount, and poor Ben receives the least uh -oh. amount. Don't be sad, Benny. Money can't buy you happiness. Although Claire seems to be crying in a very Yay! extravagant car. In a quaint museum filled with precious artifacts, a valuable item has gone missing. The curator calls upon a renowned detective to solve the mystery. Here's what the detective knows. The missing artifact is not a painting, sculpture, or jewelry. It was stolen during the daytime, while the museum was open to the public. The thief did not use force to steal the artifact. The security footage shows a suspicious visitor near the exhibit at the time of the theft. The visitor was not wearing any gloves, and there are no fingerprints left behind. Can you help the detective uncover the missing artifact and identify the visitor who stole it? The missing artifact is a rare and valuable ancient coin. After carefully examining the clues, the detective realizes that the thief cleverly utilized a distraction. The suspicious visitor is a professional magician who specializes in sleight-of-hand tricks. Instead of physically taking the coin, the magician used his skills to perform a subtle trick. He pretended to take the coin, but quickly replaced it with a similar-looking counterfeit coin from his pocket. The detective deduces that the real artifact is still in the museum, cleverly hidden in plain sight. After inspecting the exhibit, 
the detective finds that the genuine coin is still on display, but it was switched with an identical counterfeit coin during the magician's visit. By carefully examining the remaining coins in the exhibit, the detective spots subtle differences in weight and design that distinguish the genuine artifact from the counterfeit coins. The detective then retrieves the real coin, which had been cleverly camouflaged amidst the forgeries. As a result, the detective identifies the magician as the visitor who attempted the theft, but realizes that the actual artifact was never truly stolen. The case is solved, and the valuable ancient coin is returned to its rightful place in the museum. It's time for a hilarious animal party, but the guests are causing a commotion with their unusual antics. Can you figure out which animals were invited to the party based on these clues? There was an animal with a big red nose telling jokes and making everyone laugh. There was an animal wearing a crown playing the trumpet. There was an animal with stripes juggling colorful balls. There was an animal with a long trunk serving delicious ice cream. Let's start with the animal with the big red nose telling jokes and making everyone laugh. Well, this shouldn't be taken literally. Who is famous for their red nose and jokes? Right, clowns. So the animal telling jokes must be the clownfish. Next one, the animal wearing a crown and playing the trumpet. Once again, don't take it literally. The crown symbolizes royalty, and the animal playing the trumpet must be the king of the party. Lions are often associated with being king of the animal kingdom, so it's the lion wearing the crown. Next, the animal with stripes juggling colorful balls. Stripes are a characteristic of zebras, and they have nimble hoofs perfect for juggling. Thus, the animal juggling colorful balls is the zebra. Last but not least, the animal with a long trunk serving delicious ice cream. The only animal with a long trunk is the elephant, and it's the fourth guest. A villain lured Detective Johnson into a trap. He told the detective that if he wanted to survive, he needed to crack a riddle. Then he put a jug of juice and an empty glass in front of him. There was nothing else on the table. Johnson needed to fill the glass to the brim. But after that, the jug had to contain the same amount of juice as it did at the beginning. Can you help the detective figure out how to do it? It's very simple. The detective should pour the drink into the glass and then place it inside the jug. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. Some distance away, they found the hat coat and glasses lying on the ground. They realized that the criminal could be hiding in the nearby cafe. Look at these four men. All of them are cafe visitors. You need to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses so it can't be the man in the corner. It means that the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip. He must have gotten rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. Builders were mixing sand, gravel, and cement for the foundation of a house. Suddenly, one of the workers noticed a small bird hopping along the top of the foundation wall. At one point, the bird misjudged the distance and fell down one of the holes between the blocks. No one could reach it since the bird was too far down. The hole was also too small for it to fly out of. Someone suggested using two sticks to try to pull the bird out. But this idea was rejected because it could easily injure the fragile bird. What would be the easiest way to get the bird out of the hole without hurting it?
Since the workers have plenty of sand at hand, they can pour a little at a time into the hole. The bird would constantly keep shifting its position and get closer to the surface along with the rising sand. Now this riddle will require some thinking and analytical skills. Yeah. You might even need to get a pen and a slip of paper. Listen attentively. Two criminals were caught stealing. Detective Brightbrain suspects that the criminals are in cahoots. But this is just speculation, and there's no proof. The detective offers each of the criminals a deal, to rat on his comrade and get freedom for this. But the other criminal will be sentenced to 10 years in prison. If the criminal refuses to testify, he'll spend six months in prison for refusing to cooperate with the investigation. If both testify against each other, both will receive two years in prison. The criminals are isolated from each other and cannot communicate. It's in everyone's interest to reduce the time spent behind bars as much as possible. What decision should each criminal make? Make a deal with the investigation or remain silent? Since they can't communicate with each other, the criminals have four possibilities. A is silent and B is silent equals each get six months in prison. A is silent and B testifies. B is released and A is sentenced to 10 years. A testifies and B is silent equals A is released and B is sentenced to 10 years. A testifies and B testifies equals both get imprisoned for two years. If the suspects are not allowed to communicate, then they do not know what the other will choose. In this situation, if A remains silent, then, depending on B's decision, he will be sentenced to 10 years or 6 months. If A testifies against B, A will receive 2 years in prison or will be released. So, it will be more profitable for each of the suspects to testify against each other so as not to be sentenced to 10 years. But, if A and B had the opportunity to communicate, then, of course, the best solution for each of them would be to refuse to make a deal with the investigation and get only six months in prison. On the first day of school, someone pierced the uh -oh. wheels of the principal's car. When a detective arrived, she immediately suspected that the culprit was not one of the students, but an adult, since all the children were in the classroom. So, she questioned four teachers, asking each of them what they had been doing at 8 a.m. Mr. Walter said that he'd been on his way to school, running late. Mrs. Thomas answered that she had been checking her students' exam papers. Mr. Benjamin said that he'd been reading a newspaper. And Mrs. Calvin explained that she had been in her office with her husband, who had come to visit her. The detective immediately realized who had punctured the tires on the principal's car. Who was it? It was Mrs. Thomas. Oh, no. She couldn't be checking exam papers on the first day of school. Mary Levis was a famous detective. Once, she was gathering all available information on a tricky case. A well-known banker disappeared from his office. The detective had five suspects. Alice, Jack, Stefan, Nicholas, and Maria. The thing is, on the banker's table, Mary found a diary with several entries. The latest entry said, At 10 o'clock, I have a meeting with Maria. The next day, at 1 o'clock, I have to meet with Nicholas. And on June 3rd, I have an $11 million deal with Stefan. It's important not to mix it up. After carefully examining the evidence, the detective realized who was behind the banker's disappearance. Who was it? It was Jack. All the numbers in the last entry, 10, 1, 3, and 11, are the order of the letters in the alphabet. By matching the numbers with letters, you can get the name. There was a theft in a multi-story building. The victim was sure she would receive a large payment from the insurance company. As for the robber, she claimed he had jumped out of the window and disappeared. The detective went to the first floor, opened a closed window, and threw a coin out of it. Then he went up to the second floor and did the same. He continued to climb floor after floor, opening windows and throwing coins, until he reached the last one. 
Then he returned and said that the victim was lying. How did he understand it? The detective had to open every window on every floor. If the robber had jumped out on his own, he wouldn't have been able to close the window behind him. He had an accomplice, and most likely, it was the victim who wanted a payout from the insurance company. Jake and his friend Jonathan likes challenging each other. One would suggest something they could do, and the other would prove it wrong somehow. One day, Jake surprised Jonathan by stating, I can answer any question in the world. Jonathan was sure that he could win the challenge, so he accepted the task of proving it wrong. He wrote up a test full of super hard questions. After a while, Jake returned the test. Jonathan lost the challenge. He had to admit that Jake could indeed answer any question. How did Jake win? He indeed answered all the questions by writing, I don't know. Two workmen were repairing a roof. Suddenly, they both fell down the chimney and found themselves in a large fireplace. One man's face was smeared with soot, but the face of the other was clean. The second man washed his face, but the worker whose face was dirty didn't and just went back to work. Why? When the two men looked at each other, the one with the clean face thought his face was dirty as well. The other man, though, looked at his companion and thought that his face was clean.